I hate it when you get a nail in a piece of wood and you hit it with your chainsaw. So I'm not going to give up. This is a very nice uh, cherry blank. It's about 13 inches. And as I orient the template, I believe I can salvage uh, almost all of that 13 inches. I'm going to try to trim it a little bit with a bandsaw to get rid of some of the, the imbalance staying away from that nail. So here I cleaned it up a little bit on the bandsaw, uh, cutting around that nail. I don't know, I might flip it over and, well, I can't cut it on the side very well, but so I'll probably just have to work that off with a bowl gouge. And I thought I'd cut these little outcrops with the, my Dozuki uh, saw. Well, the reason I thought this might be worth saving, because it was a crotch, and I might get some nice uh, feather in the middle of this bowl. Here's one of the crotch pieces coming out, and here's the other one. But, but it, this is being revealed to me as I get down to it, that it looks like it's likely to be a piece of bob wire. And because of the angle, I've got a feeling it may go all the way through here. So I'm at a quandary. All of my implements of de destruction as I tried to get that, unsuccessfully get that piece of bob wire out. I mount the bowl blank with a uh, large two-prong drive, drive center. All right, so I'm going to use a 5 8 inch bowl gouge and try to knock these corners off to to uh, bring it down a little bit and I'll stop as I get toward the bob wire. Got it on my hip, using my body to, for the movement. slow, letting the tool rest take the punishment. Got the dark spot here. I think I'm going to use a uh, heavier magic marker to sneak up on it just so I'll make sure when I get get close to it And to hit the uh, bob wire, I think I may fold it over. I'm not sure what to do with it. I'm going to wind up cutting it with the uh, bowl gouge sooner or later, and it'll just take some sharpening. High speed steel will beat uh, low carbon steel every time. And I've tentatively marked uh, a tenon for my larger. Larger jaw, so I'm going to come in and sneak up on that a little bit. I think I'm going to have to go to a sharper bowl gout. This one's been dulled a little bit on that, uh, that bob wire, so let me get a different one. Step down to a half inch. Now I'm going to put a dovetail on it. I'm just going to knock the corner off here. And it looks fairly clean. Uh, I need to get in there a little bit, a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to use a detail gouge. A very shallow flute. I can get right into that corner. And that'll do it. Now it gives me a little better feel for the rough shape of the outside of the bowl now that I know where the tenon is. Got a little ant here visiting me. <laughs> Wonder how long he's been inside. 
All right, I'm cutting into this barbed wire. I've passed it now, so I'm going to go ahead and finish taking this this cut and bringing it on around. Okay, I think I've got the outside. Time to do the inside. I'm still not sure. I think I think I may finish it with that bob wire and call it bob wire bowl. So we're getting ready to hollow. I think I'm going to uh, true up the face of this before I go too much further. I think we got it balanced pretty well, so I'm going to bring it up. It's running about 700, about as fast as I care to go. hole to uh, for my center find my depth drill to find the center there we go we're using a quarter inch depth drill I got it marked with a little washer here and I've got this this round handle here make it a little easier to hold on to Green, so I better clear chips periodically. This is a large bowl. Small bowls I might not bother to move, but I'm going to move it, move the, the uh, headstock down to the tailstock for a little more ergonomic stance. Bring it in. Start with the, the bevel at almost 90 degrees. Handle out 45. Start to cut. Alright, I sharpened my 5 8 inch bowl gouge. With a 13 inch bowl like this, I need a little larger, a little more meat that I've got in this 5 8 rather than the half inch. So I'll have a link up here to this uh, video I have on the bottom feeder bowl gouge, how to, how to sharpen one. And we'll get back at it now that it's been sharp. I lay this on top and just look over it and it's like, oh, I got a ways to go. Got about an inch. Well, grabbing that bark inclusion. Which goes back to here. Uh oh, I'm seeing sparks. So I think what I was getting is I'm beginning to hit that bob wire somewhere here. So let's see if we examine where that is. Okay, ah, here we go. I didn't see it. I'd like to figure out how to make that a feature, but I'm not sure how. Let's see if we can give you a nice close up of that twisted bob wire. I'm going to think, force it up with a uh, screwdriver and cut it off. I think I may have to call this the Bob Wire Bowl from Hell. Uh, it comes out here, but it's, it's a good four inches away from where it enters, so <laughs> there's going to be a lot more of it where this came from. So let's see if I can't. I don't think I'm going to be able to pull it out, but I'll give it a try. I broke off one end. So I removed some more barbed wire, hollowed it out a little bit more. I'm going to try something different. I'm going to try this uh, scraper see if I can cut through the, the few pieces that are sticking up. The scraper on the other side, let's try it on this side. sharpen this. Okay, I'm going to put a rope texture bead around the top. And that's definitely a rope 
looking texture. So let's go ahead and now round over the bead and come back and do it again. And just kind of round over this, this bead a little bit on both sides so we can come back and finish this, this rope. this big flat bead if you will now I'm going to sand it and then I'm going to come back and and texture it I was finally able to get rid of that bob wire that went from from here to here originally it was about four inches before I took some off a little more off and now the challenge I need to get this thinner I use these calipers here I can measure the thickness. It's going to be a thick bowl. I want it about three quarters of an inch because this is uh, because of the the fundamental weaknesses of some of this. Uh, here I need to come down a little bit more. I need to come down a little bit more. So my challenge is this bark inclusion. It goes all the way through to here and on the on both sides. So I can't push too terribly hard, I can't go too fast, or I'm liable to uh, destroy this thing. So I'm using my bottom feeder bowl gouge to pick up the cut down here and bring it across. i get my hip in here. Maybe I'm pressing too hard. My tool rest keeps sliding on me. I think I need to do what I see some people do in the video. Tap it with a handle. Okay. So when I come down here, I start picking up tremendous chatter as I'm making that transition along from side grain to end grain, and it's exacerbated by this uh, our conclusion. So I think I'm pressing a little hard. Let me take lighter cut. I always have a challenge getting it smooth right here, so I wind up cleaning up frequently underneath my shadow line with a scraper. So I've sharpened the, the, on this negative rake scraper. I've sharpened the bottom burr. Now I'm going to take off or the bottom. Uh, angle. Now I'm going to take off that burr created by the grinder because it's a little too coarse even with a fine wheel. Now I'm going to use this carbide rod to actually add a fine burr back to it. Take a couple of passes. Uh, I've got a video you can catch that on negative rake scrapers if you want to find out more about negative rake scrapers with two bevels. large tool marks would be very difficult to sand. Now I'm going to go flat here on this surface. Then I can actually measure the distance between and it's still one inch so I'm still I still got a quarter of an inch I'd like to go. Going back to the largest <clears throat> scraper I have which is a, a full yeah, about a half an inch thick and a good uh, it's one inch, one inch wide is what it states. So this has got a lot of mass. I'm gonna pick it up along the bottom, try to get rid of some of these tool marks I have here. All right, so I'm using my 
three eighths inch uh, angled angle drill from Woodturner's Wonders. I, I, what I like about it especially is this paddle paddle switch that makes it easier. Take off tool rest for safety. I put some uh, sanding lubricant on there. I'm going to turn the speed down. Down to about as low as it'll go, about 125. Check my progress. That's looking good. Feeling good. Feeling good. Now I'm going to look for the areas that I've got some individual marks, uh, prim primarily on the end grain, and pay special attention to those without uh, without the lathe on. Between grits, I blow out the, the dust. So this bowl with the bark inclusion in the in the hole and the two uh, ingrain uh, in crotch, crotches really was a challenge to sand this and I still got more sanding to go but it devoured I used some 80 grit and then I, I used uh, two different 120 grit uh, standard sanding discs and it just tore, tore them up uh, as, as I was power sanding so I switched to Wood Turner's Wonders uh, uh, Wonder Wondernet. It's got holes in it. It's like Abernet. It's their version. And I used the 120 grit and I am really pleased at how well it held up. It's, uh, it, it took care of all my problem sanding and it's still in good shape. So it lasts considerably longer. And then with the, the weave it, it makes it easy for the dust to, uh, to clear. Time to reverse this bowl with a friction chuck. I use this contour gauge to get a feel for what the bottom look, looks like and then I can make uh, some minor changes on this uh, jam chuck block I'm going to use. So I compare the two and I've got some, just some minor uh, shaping that I'm going to do here that I'll do quickly with uh, this small bowl gouge. Doesn't have to be perfect, I just need to get some good good contact. Alright, so now I can reverse this. I've got this set up. This is the chuck and the jaws. It's a large chuck with large jaws, so it projects out a little bit. This projects out a little bit, so the bowl clears. Uh, this might be a challenge for some on some lays. And of course I left that little center point just to make it easy to center. Normally I would use a drill, a, uh, my vacuum chuck for this, but because of all the uh, crevices and holes, of course I couldn't get enough suction. Shear scraper. The beauties of this Wonder Weave or, or Abernet is open mesh is you can knock it out and a lot of the dust will actually clear just from tapping it. Do a little clean up at the bottom. You can mount the mandrel with a, uh, certainly do it with a drill chuck, but you ought to have a draw bar. Uh, because I have a collet chuck that threads on, I find that easiest for me. You could also do this on a drill press, so you could actually do it off the lathe with a with a hand hand drill, but I'm going to, to 
move this out of the way. And now I'm just going to clean up the bottom, bottom of the bowl a bit. Take your wonder when you've off, blow through it, clean off almost everything. My bowl has some severe cracking from the pith coming through that side. And also the opposite side. I've got this very large bark inclusion. Uh, I've got this that pith crack continuing around the bottom. So I've got a lot of work to do to try to fill this, uh, repair those cracks. I have some epoxy that's uh, frankly been on the shelf for almost three years so they, it's getting hard. It is may be a failure but we'll see if I can't mix up some epoxy uh, along with a product called uh, Spin Gems which, which is a synthetic rock but it's made out of resins I think. We'll see how this works. I got masking tape and duct tape and trying to hold this stuff in place and we'll see how it dries and how easy it is to sand off the lathe.